For more details on some of our stories, visit WNYT.com with more news from MSNBC. WNYT.com is powered by Veronet Solutions, putting Internet technology to work for your business. Welcome back to news that is likely to make somebody's day. In case you haven't heard, you have an extra day to do your taxes this year. It's Patriot's Day in Massachusetts, which is a state holiday there, and people in our part of the country send federal returns to Andover, Massachusetts. That office was closed today, so you get an extra day. New York State deadline is also extended until midnight tomorrow. The general mail facility on Old Carner Road in Colony and the branch at 400 Broadway in Troy will both be open until midnight tomorrow, so you can mail in your returns. If you have New York State tax questions, you can call 1-800-225-5829, and you can also check out some helpful websites by going to our website at WNYT.com. Just imagine how difficult your taxes would be if you suddenly found yourself with a $325 million windfall. That's the jackpot for tomorrow night's big game drawing. Massachusetts is one of seven states participating in the big game, and we'll have the winning numbers for you tomorrow night here on Live at 11. That would be more than enough money to buy yourself a space station rail car. Be careful what you're buying, however, because that rail car is not working tonight the way it's supposed to work. As Dan Billow tells us, astronauts are installing the rail system as part of the newest addition to the International Space Station. We're about to uh, start the space railroad here, if uh, y'all are ready on the ground. Copy, Alpha. We're ready. The new rail car, all $190 million worth, is in the right of this picture. Astronauts say it looks a little like a pizza box on wheels. A previous test on the ground gives you a better idea of what it looks like. It's about 9 feet by 9 feet and moves very slowly along rails on the outside of the 44-foot-long truss just attached to the space station by the crew of Atlantis. In this picture, spacewalker Jerry Ross is moving hand over hand along the rail car's rails. The rail car is to his right. In its first test, the rail car moved as planned, but then failed to latch itself down. Alpha Houston, now we're taking a look at your MT sequence fail message. Flight controllers believe the car's magnets failed to sense iron strips in the rails. Animation shows why it's important that the car latch itself down at these designated stopping points. It has to have a firm base from which to continue the assembly of the space station. The car will carry the robot arm to work sites on the station, but if it cannot latch down, space station assembly cannot continue. It appears this is not going to be a quick answer. Uh, Robo's taken a hard look at all the data. And we're going to stand down from NT Ops for just the time being. At Cape Canaveral, Dan Billow for NBC News. We had our own rocket launch here in the Capital Region today. Three, two, one, let's go! The group Girls Incorporated is running a program this week for young women between the ages of 9 and 11. The girls made their own model rockets, which flew about 300 feet into Schenectady Central Park skyline. Which is also about as far as I ran in today's Boston Marathon, 300 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be tacked on the 26.2 mile, of course. There were some balls flying out of Shea Stadium tonight. Wild game. We've got highlights, Mets and Braves, plus Yankees and Red Sox. On Patriots Day in Boston, the Rangers fired their uh, head coach at a big decision from uh, RPI. Junior forward Mark Cavosi is in. We'll tell you about it coming up next on Big Board Sports. Welcome to Big Board Sports. Let's start baseball. The Atlanta Braves limped into Shea Stadium tonight, having not scored a run in 22 innings. The matchup, Sean Estes, Damian Moss, and once again, the Mets have major problems in the field, although this is not ruled an error. Roger Cedeno misses the cutoff man big time, and two runs are in. It's three to nothing. And then Andrew Jones sent one deep and out of here, and the Braves had a 5-0 lead in the second inning. In fact, the Mets were down 6-1 in the seventh. Mike Piazza, his second of the night off Moss, his fifth of the year. It's a 6-2 game. Same inning, 6-4. Up steps pinch hitter John Valentin, and you know where that's headed. Out of here, and the game is tied. You see the final score, and here's how it happened. Bottom of the 12th, Edgardo Alfonso, the looping base hit into right field. Off Kevin Grabowski, 
Jay Payton rounds and scores, and the Mets win in dramatic style tonight, 7-6. to six. A couple of other scores, Chicago beat Montreal, Sosa hit number six. And Pittsburgh won in Milwaukee 6 to 1. It was Patriots Day in Boston. The Red Sox seem to be ready for the traditional 11 a.m. start and the morning parade got things rolling and it didn't take Boston long to get to Andy Pettit. Nomar Garcia Parra doubling home Ricky Henderson and then Pettit walked the man who's hurt him all series, Shea Hillenbrand with the bases loaded. Pettit would leave though after three with tenderness in the left elbow. Lowe was terrific. Derek Lowe had the, maybe the outing of his career. Nine strikeouts, just two hits and seven innings. Yankees are down 4-1, and they're going to get back in the game here. Thanks to Derek Jeter, that will get out of it, the yard, and it's a 4-3 game. But in the ninth, Oogie Urbina, on a questionable call, gets John Vanderwall to end the game. I say you got to swing the bat with two strikes. Boston takes a three out of four in the series, and now there is some concern about the health of Pettit. Andy felt something, uh, we feel pretty good about it. It's in the elbow, but it's, it's more muscular, the muscular area. So, you know, we still obviously are uh, concerned, but uh, we'll wait until the next time he's supposed to throw. American Lake, Chicago over Baltimore, and Texas and Seattle tied 10-10 in the ninth. Here at home, congratulations are in order for RPI junior forward Mark Cavosi. Cavosi announcing today that he signed a contract with the Minnesota Wild in the NHL and will forego his senior season. The Cahoes native and graduate of Albany Academy scored 23 goals in 36 games this season. Cavosi, who led the AC, ECAC in overall points with 50, is ready for the next challenge. Well, I'm excited to move on, and uh, I mean, this is a dream come true for any hockey player. But uh, also a little nervous if I'm going to make it, if I'm going to be able to do this and that. But uh, again, I'm just going to go in with an open mind, and uh, hopefully things should work out for me. Let's hope they do good luck. In the NHL uh, playoffs, they begin later this week, and once again, the Rangers are going to sit home, but they're not sitting still. Today, they fired their head coach, Ron Lowe. He gets the ax. The Rangers had the highest payroll in the league and finished 11th in the Eastern Conference. Former Sabres coach Ted Nolan is already being tabbed as one of the favorites to take the job. As we told you earlier, today was Patriots Day in Boston. That also means the running of the Boston Marathon. This annual race had an American flair with nearly 17,000 runners serenaded by national songs before crossing a red, white, and blue starting line for the 26.2-mile run. Kenyon swept the first four spots in the men's division, led by Rogers Ropp, whose winning time was two hours, nine minutes and two seconds. Another Kenyan, Margaret Okio, won the women's division. Her time, two hours, 20 minutes, and 43 seconds. And Big Board Radio Sports comes your way Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 on Sports Talk 980. So, but that 300 feet that I ran of the marathon, I was on fire. Quick. Yeah. Point. Is that the two-tenths of a mile? Is that That's the, the, yes, the one. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. We'll be back to take an advanced look inside tomorrow's newspaper. We'll also take one last look at our forecast. Looks like your school tax bill may be something of a surprise this year and not a pleasant one. Tomorrow's Times Union will report on how school districts are handling their budgets while the state leaders continue to talk about the possibility of adding more to the education budget. School districts are assuming nothing until they have the money actually in their hands. Also, veterinarians in Berkshire County say more dogs in the county are coming down with Lyme disease this year. That story will be in the Berkshire Eagle. And finally tonight, some people who may have a little too much time on their hands. They're waiting in line for tickets to see a movie. Nothing wrong with that, you say, right? Except that the movie doesn't open for another month. These people are waiting outside a Texas theater for the new Star Wars movie, Attack of the Clones, which will open on May 16th. Well, at least they have pleasant weather down there to wait. That's my birthday, May 16th. Oh, happy it's birthday nice early. George Lucas to I'll take you to the movies. movies. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Get the <laughs> tickets now. It's going to be a packed house. 85 tomorrow. Beautiful summer-like forecast. A bit humid even. Record high 88. We'll make a run at that. And the four-day forecast shows the nice mild weather continuing through the week with nothing more than scattered showers and thunderstorms. That's it. We've got for tomorrow, Roger. Five City Valley Cats. Baseball team unveil their new uniforms tomorrow. Ooh, we'll yes. have it for you at six. Okay, thanks. And thank you for joining us tonight. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night.